have another video where we're tearing apart and rebuilding a couple old Crossman 101s. And uh, one thing that you run across from time to time is, uh, well, it'll back up, this, this is the compression chamber. You're supposed to pump the air in through this uh, intake port here, and it fits in the tube something like that. You notice there's a lip here, and that fits against a shelf inside the tube. And back in the 1930s when they made these, uh, they used asbestos, some kind of asbestos thread or twine or something. And this was secured with a nut to, to uh, push it up against the, uh, the seat in here. And that prevented the air when you're pumping it from getting around this and forced it in a place it could go as being the intake port. But uh, nowadays we don't like asbestos, and so we um, we're kind of in a bind here with what to do with this. Now, some people say you can wrap a waxed thread around here and use that, and that'll work. And I, maybe it does. I've never tried it. At some point, Crossman decided uh, this was not a good solution, and that instead they would uh, cut a groove into the uh, end of this for an o-ring and they switched over to that method and i'll put that uh, a picture of that up uh, online so you can you can uh, see that if you wanted to try doing this yourself so we're going to do here's one that actually has the uh, groove cut in it you can see it right here it takes a number 111 o-ring and i had the opportunity to measure probably half a dozen of these grooves at one time and they ranged from about uh, 90 what did I have 95 thousandths to 102 thousandths in terms of width and the specs say it should be uh, 105 thousandths plus or minus two thousandths so 103 to 107 well none of the ones that came from Crossman met their own uh, criteria here. So we're going to go ahead and cut this and the good news is that the o-ring in this application is pretty forgiving. Uh, you know if we were shooting astronauts up we would uh, of course be a little bit more precise in the uh, grooves and maybe the type of material we use on the o-ring but for this um, if we get it pretty close and don't make it too loose it should work. So what I did is I ground a tool bit here. So what we're going to do is take the uh, tool bit and we're going to put it. We're going to put this in the lathe and we're going to plunge this in and cut that groove for the O-ring. And the uh, the depth they specified it here, and I forget what it is, but it's on the drawing, somewhere around. When you're done, the uh, the uh, inside of the groove should be around 450 thousandths, if I remember right. And we do it at this end because it's got more meat. This is thin at this end. And you can see, when you go to that end, we've got about that much where it's that thick. So lots of room, lots of uh, metal to uh, take the O-ring. Um, in my particular lathe, I can't just chuck this up. You know, ideally, you'd put this in and uh, right into the chuck jaws and cut the groove. I can't do that because my jaws are too uh, thick, I guess you'd say. So it would grab here, but not here. And, you know, we could sleeve it. There's different ways we could get around that. But I saw this on uh, uh, Joe Pazinski's YouTube channel. Joe Pye, if you're interested in machining, uh, he's got a lot of really cool stuff that he does. And basically all it is is a couple of O-rings, uh, and as you squeeze them inside of here, it tightens up. So, uh, yeah, we'll put one together here. Okay, so it's not too tight yet. That goes in there, and it's kind of wobbly. But as you tighten that screw, you squeeze the O-ring 
and it um, it uh, grabs the inside of the uh, compression chamber. So we're going to put it in like that. <laughs> Okay, we've got all our parts done and cleaned and lubed up and ready to go back in. You notice the uh, compression chamber here has the O-ring and it's going to go into the tube and instead of sealing here with this lip against the seat in here, it's going to seal out here instead. So the air can't get past the O-ring when you're pumping it. It's forced to go into the intake port there. And this is held in place by the exhaust valve and butts up against the compression chamber, something like that. And there's a nut here. I think you saw some uh, threads on the inside of the tube earlier. And this uh, nut screws into those threads and snugs that all up against the uh, seat in here. So, and we'll show that. We've got a, a disassembly video and a reassembly video that we're working on and we had some trouble with an SD card so we're going to have to reshoot some of it but uh, that should be coming out fairly soon but I thought this might be kind of a special topic that uh, we'd handle separately and that's how you put the groove into your compression chamber thanks for watching mm -hmm.